Hello everyone, this is DB0 and I'm going to be making this video on how to play the Star Wars, the card game on Octagon. Uh, I'm hoping this video will help you uh, get used to the controls and uh, some of the idiosyncrasies that uh, Octagon has and uh, allow you to play the game effectively and uh, uh, with the least amount of tedium. Okay, so let's start with the basics. This is your uh, uh, screen. This is uh, basically the board game where you're going to play the game. The top side is your opponent's side, the bottom side is where your cards are going to be. Uh, these are the menu options. The game menu allows you to load and save your deck if you have, uh, if you played, for example, a draft. Um, you can see uh, the game in full screen and reset the game to play another one. Game documents allow you to see the full game summary, which is uh, the rules of the game. If you want to uh, find something there, um, some ruling, some um, specific rules question, you can use Control F to search the document. And you can also find an unofficial action window reference can help you remember where you can play card effects. Um, then on the bottom you have the chat menu. The chat menu will uh, give you important information as you play. You can use it also to talk to your opponent. And here you see your control panel where you have your reserves, the dial which is synchronized between the two players and the objective destroyed for each player. Um, below that you see is the space for uh, your hand, your command deck, your objective deck, your discard pile and on the side you have some other ones which are not so important which is the victory pile, uh, the uh, remove from game pile and the scripting pile. But the most important are the ones that are open currently. Um, the game uh, has context menus which allow you to do the various actions. So the table context menu, if you right click on an empty spot on the table it will open this menu. Um, any action that uh, doesn't have this little arrow uh, is a, a specific uh, effect. So you can use this to do something uh, on the table. Um, for example, resolve the force struggle or manually grab the edge. Anything that has this little arrow has a sub menu where it has more options inside. Um, the same is true if you right click on your hand or on a pile. You can do various effects. For example, you can shuffle your deck or you can draw some cards. In your hand you can mulligan or discard the card, etc. But most of these you cannot see before you actually start the game. So let's see how this goes. To start the game, first of all, you need to load your deck. And we load. Let's start with one of the Sith decks for one player. And let's load the Jedi deck for the other player. Now once you load your deck, you will see your affiliation on, the, um, uh, on your hand. And then you will see your deck load and your objectives. You should have 50 and 10. Uh, depending on how many objectives you have in your deck. Obviously the starter decks have only 40 and 8. And uh, now to prepare your side, you simply need to set up. To do that you go to game and you press the setup. As you can see, it has a shortcut here, so you don't have to actually use the menu, you can just press Ctrl Shift S. For now we'll just use the shortcut. And you will see that your objective is your affiliation is placed on the table. You will get some basic b buttons that you can use to uh, communicate with the other player and some uh, standard, some uh, starting objectives. Let's go as the Jedi player, so it's same, Control Shift S, and it sets up our side of the table. Um, now, uh, as part of the game, we need to select one of our objectives to send to the bottom of our deck. To do that, you simply uh, double click one of your objectives and will be automatically be sent to the bottom and will announce to the other player that you set up your starting three. So the player has to do the same. So let's send this back. And now that we sent that we set up our objectives, press Ctrl Shift S and it set puts the objectives on the table. Um, as you can see, the uh, dark side player has a more uh, 
uh, view than the Jedi player. This is because the dark side player has zoomed out of the board. One of the things you can do is you can zoom in with the mouse scroll. The game usually starts at the zoom uh, value 1, which is, should be most, most comfortable, but you can zoom more or less depending on how, you must, how many cards you want to see. Uh, if you want, you can pan the table by pressing space and then dragging your mouse around. And this allows you to move the table in a location that you want. For example, if I move everything a bit to the right, then I can double click the top of the chat menu and it will expand to the top so I can see more chat actions. Now, once what player have set up their uh, starting objectives, we can now uh, see if we want to mulligan any of our cards. You see, you start with your first six cards and you, if you don't like any of them, you can try to mulligan. Let's uh, see the light side of the, object, the Jedi player. He has three fate cards, so that's probably a good idea for the mulligan. We right click on a hand, press mulligan, the game will confirm. It surfs again, we draw five new cards. Once board players are ready and we are ready to uh, start the game, simply double click on your face down objectives and it will reveal them for the other player. Now one of the things you see here is one of these cards is triggered to trigger some of its scripting. For now we're going to ignore it and we're going to see how triggers work later on. The first thing we're going to see is how we change between the phases. Uh, phases, as you can see in the phase menu, have uh, you can jump directly to one phase or you can just move to the next phase accordingly to which one you are currently in. You should not use the jump to a specific phase unless you uh, did a mistake and you wanted to jump back to a previous phase. For some reason, something went wrong in the game. But most of the time you should just use move to the next phase, which is a simple control enter shortcut. Okay, since this is the dark side player's turn, we're going to start with the balance phase. Uh, as soon as you go to the balance phase, the Death Star will increase by 1, as is uh, according to the rules, and since we don't have the balance of the force. If the balance of the force, the Death Star would be increased by 2. Since there's nothing we can do in the balance phase, we go next to directly to the next phase. The next phase is the refresh. The refresh will automatically remove all focus tokens from your cards, if they have any. Um, but since there's no focus uh, tokens and no shield tokens in the game, this at the moment does nothing. So we proceed to the next phase, draw phase. Here you can, you have now the opportunity to discard one of your cards and the game will automatically refill your hand to your hand to your reserve maximum, which at the moment is 7 because we have the reconnaissance mission. So let's say we wanted to discard uh, Intimidated and then we proceed to the next phase. You can either right click on your deck and refill your hand or you can just proceed to the next phase. Let's refill our hand and now the opponent has a chance to play reacts. And once we're done, we proceed to the next phase, which is the deployment. In the deployment phase, you have a chance to play your units and uh, your characters and your enhancements. So let's see how this works. So let's say I want to play this interrogation droid. Actually, let's say I want to play this Darth Vader. I double click on Vader and he is placed on the table with a yellow height line. A yellow height line means that the card is waiting for payment. Uh, once the payment is uh, given to the card, it will automatically be uh, placed in the proper location on the table. So how do we provide the payment? We simply um, double click on one of our cards that provides the, uh, resources and that automatically gives to our card the resource of the appropriate type. So if I double click on the reconnaissance mission, we get one a neutral resource. If I give on the Sith uh, affiliation, I get one Sith resource. Let's continue pain. I double click on the Soundos of Dathomir. I give two resources. If I give, for example, four resources and Soundos of Dathomir only gives two, a game will give us an error and then I have to choose between maximum of two. I give two resources to Darth Vader. So let's give two resources to Darth Vader and he comes into play. As you can see, he is automatically placed on the table in a proper location. So now that I've finished with my uh, uh, f with my uh, 
deployment phase, I don't have anything else to play. I can continue. Uh, since this is the dark, si dark side, we skip our con the first conflict phase, and the game goes takes us straight to the force phase. Uh, in the force phase, you can assign units to the force. To do that, you right-click on a unit, and you can commit to the force, or you can press Ctrl F. Committing to the force gives a black outline if it's for the dark side player, and a white outline if it's for the light side player. And the unit committed to the force will automatically add force bonus to the force at the end of the turn. So if I now resolve the force struggle, the balance of the force comes to my side. And you can see here that the game shows us a calculation that went into this. So the Jedi training from the light side player gave plus one force for the total. But since I have four and they have only one, the strug force struggle tips the balance of the force to me. In the chat menu, it's very important, you can see here, that if you mouse over a card name to from a card in the chat menu, it will automatically show you on the side the card. This is easy if you missed, um, or if you're not sure exactly what's going on, you can always follow the chat menu and uh, see what's going on in the game. In this case, uh, I committed that value to the force, and then the force struggle uh, happened, and I had four points, and the other player had only one. Once you've done with your force phase, uh, you can press Control Enter to swap. If you haven't done the force struggle, pressing Control Enter will automatically calculate the force struggle and will automatically give the balance to the force to the appropriate player. Pressing Control Enter will end our turn now. Now, you see this black, this blue text means that the turn has changed. And when the turn changes, uh, you see that in our side this little uh, play buttons go away and this little pause button appears. Um, the difference is the uh, play button, uh, when you see this play button, it is currently your turn and you can pass now the turn to another player. When you see this post button, it just means that it's not your turn and you cannot, uh, you shouldn't be playing any cards that you cannot play in your turn. Uh, but they don't give any other functional difference. So uh, when you see this blue text, the turn has ended correctly. Sometimes it doesn't appear and you can just notice where this uh, green buttons are in, and that's the active player. So now that the dark side player has finished the turn, it's time for the light side player to play. Again, control enter will take us to the balance phase. Control enter again. We skip our face card phase. We didn't anyway have any cards played. Draw phase. Let's say we want to uh, discard one of our cards. No, well, it's good. We're going to keep them. So. We reveal, we reveal to our hand maximum, we already have hand maximum, so nothing happens, and it's now deployment phase. Let's say I want to play a unit, I want to play this Guardian of Peace. Double click this unit, give him one, give her one, two, Guardian of the Peace comes down. Let's say I also wanted to give her a Trust Your Feelings, a Jedi Lightsaber Enhancement. Now, enhancements are coming two ways. Either we have generic enhancements that enhance your play area, which you play, they come down, and uh, you drag to the area you want. As you can see, when I play this enhancement, the end you must go automatically triggered to reduce the cost. So I didn't have to pay anything because the end you must go reduces the cost of the first enhancement I play. So this is a, an automatic effect. It's not a reaction. It automatically happens, therefore. And let's say I want to play the Jedi uh, lightsaber on the Guardian of Peace. If I try to play it, Unlike the uh, INC monument, uh, this doesn't work because it requires that I target a force user or a force sensitive character. To play such an enhancement, which requires to target something, we target our relevant character and we double click the enhancement. This goes again, it requires payment, so we need to pay one Jedi resource. If we pay the Jedi training, the resource is paid and it goes to our Guardian of Peace. So the Guardian of Peace now has a dead lightsaber. Same as before, uh, let's say I want to play also my Twi'lek Loyalist. However, if I try to play him and then try to use the hit and run, he gets a neutral resource, but oops, the game warns us. The card cost has been reached, but there is no affiliation match. I cannot play the Twi'lek Loyalist. I don't have any Jedi resources to play. Therefore, I just return him to my hand. 
So the game will automatically check when you play a card if you have the correct affiliation resources used and if you have enough resources used to play him. So now that I've finished with my, uh, with my deployment, we go to the conflict phase. Now I can use the Guardian of Peace to attack. Of course there's a Darth Vader on the other side, who is quite scary to fight against, but let's see, try it and see what happens. Now, how does conflict work? To start a conflict, you have to target a card. To target, you use shift click. Shift clicking on a card allows you to target or untarget it. So, if I shift click on any of my cards, I can add or remove their targeting reticule. You can do this on your cards or on opponent cards, no problem. Um, to do an attack on an objective, we have to target the objective and then attack target objective or press Ctrl A. The objective will give, re receive a blue defending highlight and now a conflict phase will begin and the uh, declare objective phase will have started. If we want now to, uh, for our Guardian of Peace to take part, we simply double click on the Guardian of Peace which will declare her as an attacker. Now, because the Guardian of Peace has a shielding, uh, shielding uh, uh, trait, this automatically adds her a shielding token. Uh, this happens automatically uh, with your cards, and if you have more than one card that is a value, valid target, then the game will ask you to choose one of them. But in this case, uh, our Guardian of Peace has uh, only herself, so they, she shields herself. Now, once we have declared all the uh, attackers that we want, we press Ctrl Enter to move to the next phase of the conflict phase, which is declared defenders. Now, the Darkseid player has the opportunity to block with one of their units. Since we only have Darth Vader, we're going to double click on him to select him as a defender. Participating units, as you noticed, are turned sideways 90 degrees. This is simply to denote who is currently taking part in the battle. It does has no other functional use. At the end of the battle, these units will return to their upright positions. So we only have Darth Vader. Once we've deselected which units we want to use, press Control Enter, we go to the Edge Battle. Edge Battle uh, starts again with the attacker. As the attacker, I'm going to play an Edge card to, from my hand. To play an Edge card from your hand, you simply right-click on the card and play a Z card or press Ctrl E. If you try, if you by mistake double click on a card, it will tell you this card cannot be played outside the deployment phase. So you press no. So always Ctrl E to play a Z card. You, only exception is you can actually play force cards with a double click because that's the only time they can be played. So double clicking on a force card or playing an edge card goes into your uh, into the table as an edge card you can play. Okay, we're going to continue on this side again with a second edge card and let's say that the dark side player will just pass. Uh, to pass you can either use the announcements which is control space or you can use the buttons on the side. You can use the pass which means you have no further reactions and the way to want to react you can use it when uh, it is an appropriate reaction window in the phase. In this case, the dark side player thinks there's no other reason, so he's just going to pass. Once the light side player passes as well, it's time to reveal the edge cards. To reveal the edge cards, simply double click on your face down cards and the game will flip them face up and will be ready to calculate the edge. Same thing goes for the dark side player or the other, the opposing player. If you have any focus cards on the table, as soon as they reveal, they get this purple highlight. The purple highlight uh, signifies that the focus card is ready to use its ability. In this case, the focus card gives a damage to an opposing unit. So, to use it, simply target the unit that you want to use to, to damage and double click on your hit of battle. The hit of battle gets now the normal edge card highlight and the card, the Guardian of Peace, got their damage. So, since the Guardian of Peace got damaged, uh, but she has a seal token, we can now remove these tokens.
To remove a token from a card, you can simply go to Tokens, Remove Damage Token, or Remove Seal Token. So Alt and Shift and D. So let's remove the Damage Token and let's remove the Seal Token. You can also alternatively add tokens with Alt and S or Alt and D. You can add as many as you want and remove them again with the opposite, Alt, Shift and D, Alt, Shift and S. Uh, one other way you can remove token is simply dragging them out of your card to the table. If you drag a token to another card, it will place it on the other card. If you drag a token to the table, it will remove it from your card. But the uh, recommended way is to use Alt, Shift and D or S because it will automatically trigger any scripts which uh, trigger about removing damage or seal tokens. Fate action is done, it's time to calculate the edge. To calculate the edge, one of the players simply needs to double click on their fate cards on the table. So the light side player double clicks on their card and the uh, game announces who won. Nobody has managed to get the upper hand the edge, so DB0 retains the edge as the defender. So the dark side player has exactly the same edge as the attacker, but because they are the defender, they have the advantage and they keep the edge. When you get the edge, you get this icon, which gets on top of your affiliation card. This simply allows the game to know who has won the edge for this battle and activate their uh, edge enhanced scripts accordingly. Now that the edge has been declared, we proceed again with control enter to the resolve strikes phase. Since the defender has the edge, we simply target the opposing card and we double click on our Darth Vader to strike. Darth Vader strikes gets two focus tokens because he has been assigned to the force and does two damage to the Guardian of Peace. The Guardian of Peace only can sustain two damage tokens, so we have to now discard here. If it was the opposite, if let's say that uh, the Guardian of Peace had a chance to strike, uh, she would normally do only she would do nothing because the edge has been lost. However, she has a Jedi lightsaber, so let's see what happens if she strikes. We target Darth Vader and we attack. You see now that the Guardian of Peace attacked for one unit damage and one blast damage. Why? Because the lightsaber automatically took effect. The game will automatically calculate any effects on the table or on your enhancements which improve your strikes as you are attacking. So if you have an orbital bombardment or if you have a Jedi lightsaber or if you have any enhancement on Yoda, the game will automatically calculate how many force icons you have and will do the appropriate damage. In this case you saw Darth Vader got one damage token and the reconnaissance mission got a blast damage token. You notice that I didn't have to target the reconnaissance mission. The blast damage tokens when a unit has a blast damage token, automatically get assigned to the defending objective if you are the attacker. If you are the defender, as is the case with Darth Vader, his blast damage tokens did nothing. So let's remove those tokens since they didn't actually take effect. And now we have to kill the uh, Guardian of Peace. So the Guardian of Peace uh, is dead because he only has two health. So to discard the card, just mouse over the Guardian of Peace and press Discard card or thwart objective. Discarding the Guardian of Peace uh, will automatically destroy her enhancements as well. So, discard and the Guardian of Peace and her lightsaber goes to our discard pile. Now that we have no more strikes, we continue with Control Enter, which will finish the engagement. And you will see all the edge cards that are still on the table we remove, the uh, attack, uh, the defensive uh, highlight on the object will be removed and all our cards that are still participating will then face up. And there we go. Simply always remember Control Enter moves you from one face to the other and takes care to uh, clear any effects still on the table. So now our engagement is finished, we have no more uh, units to attack, we go into the force phase. The force phase, we have no more units to add to the force, however, 
we do have some uh, effects that give us force bonus. And since Darth Vader is focused out, let's see what happens. The ancient monument uh, moves to uh, gives me plus one. The Jedi training gives me plus one. I have two focus tokens, DB0, the dark side player, has zero because Darth Vader is focused out. So the balance of the force comes to the light side. And as you can see, the turn flips and goes to the dark side player. So let's go there. Now let's go to the refresh phase. Balance phase, Death Star only increases by one. Refresh phase, you can see all the focus tokens are gone except the second one from Saldus of Dathomir, which has been used for which had two on it. Um, Darth Vader removed both of his tokens because he is an elite, so he gets to remove all the tokens at the start of the turn. We continue. Control Lender, draw phase. Let's say we want to discard my Twist of Fate. I mouse over it, I press delete, Twist of Fate is discarded. Control Lender, I draw back to my maximum hand size of 7. And it's now again deployment phase. Let's bring down some useful stuff and we bring down one of the interrogation droids to discard the last card from the opponent's hand. So let's see how much this costs. 1, 2, 3. Now the interrogation droid is in. What is this? We see now Interrogation Droid gets a yellow, a green highlight. A green highlight always means this card is, has a trigger effect, uh, something basically that happens at a specific point in time, usually a react or an interrupt, and now we have a chance to use it. In this case, the Interrogation Droid's effect is that it allows us to uh, discard a random card from the opponent's hand. When you see a, a green highlight on one of the cards, the game expects you to double click on it and the effect will take place. In this case it will discard the card from our opponent. So let's do it now. Double click and you saw the hand reduced by one. And you see as the light side player my secret in format is gone. I have no more uh, cards to play so we can now proceed to the conflict phase. As a Darth Vader I would probably want to do some mayhem. So let's attack uh, in you must go, control A to attack it, I send Darth Vader over. Since uh, I have no uh, defenders and no, nobody to play the edge, I can, you can quickly pass through all the phases and go straight to the, attack to the striking phase. If you want to just bypass phase and quickly uh, get it over with, just double click the unit. The game will ask you, have you resolved the edge battle? If you press yes, the edge will be resolved and you proceed to strike with this unit. If you press no, the game will do nothing, you can proceed to do things normally. This is a, a prevention feature in case you double click too quickly when you didn't mean to. Um, so in this case I actually do want to just strike quickly with Darth Vader. I press yes and let's see what happens. The edge is assigned to me immediately because uh, uh, I am uh, the, uh, because uh, the, uh, we pressed yes on the previous command. Uh, Darth Vader gets two focus tokens for striking and he says here he attacks with two unit damage and two blast damage. Since there is no unit to attack with blast unit damage, the damage goes nowhere. However, we do get bla the blast damage on the objective. Uh, the game complained we had no units targeted uh, so our combat markers were not auto-assigned. Remember to attack and target our units so you can the game can assign the damage icons. In this case, we have no more units to attack, so pressing Control Enter will trigger an unopposed attack. So let's press Control Enter. Reward unopposed. We managed to finish the engagement at In You Must Go unopposed. They inflict one extra damage to the objective. The engagement at In You Must Go is finished. Let's say that we wanted to attack now with our interrogation droid as well. We're going to attack the hit and run just for the unopposed damage. We attack it. Double click on our droid, double click. Yes, I want to continue striking. There's nothing else to do. Control enter, unopposed damage. Easy and quick. We have nothing else to do. Control enter to move to the next phase. Control enter and the force remains with the light side. So let's see what happens now that the force is with the light side. Light side, press control enter, start the turn. 
The balance of the force is in our favor. Choose a dark side objective to dawns. We're going to select the shadows of the Athomir. As you can see, when the light side has the balance of the force and you reach your uh, balance phase, uh, the game will automatically ask you which objective you want to dawns. We want to proceed, control enter, all our cards are refreshed, and we quickly get our field. As you can see, I went to the draw phase, I pressed control enter, and the game refilled our hands to the maximum. So now I have an opportunity to play any effects. I don't want to play any, I want to continue to my next phase, and we're going to go to the deployment phase. We're going to play R2D2. As you can see, this didn't trigger any yellow highlight. R2D2 has zero cost. So he automatically gets played uh, on the table. Uh, at, at the normal unit placement. As you can see, the units are placed automatically uh, on the table in a comfortable position. You don't have to move them around. However, if you do want to move them around, you can. Nothing prevents you. You can move them around to any location that you want, and the game will even remember where you place them. But let's say, for example, at the moment, that once we played our R2D2, our opponent wants to react, because there is a reaction window. If you don't remember your reaction windows, you can either go to the game documents and see the unofficial action window reference card, which can tell you in the deployment action window the you have an action to do it after each uh, action in the deployment phase. Or alternatively, you can go into our time structure references and click on the deployment phase. And you can see in the deployment phase you play, you have a reaction window after its action. So let's say the let Jedi play play the R2D2. The Dark Side player wants to kill R2D2 before they use him for resources. So we're going to force choke him. However, we have forgotten that R2D2 is a unit, is a droid. It's not going to work very well. Let's see what happens. I play the force choke. The force choke automatically gets a green highlight. It has zero cost, so it automatically goes to the resolution phase. However, if I try to use it, I target the R2D2, I try to use it, it does nothing. Why? Error. The required target for this phase is not found. You need to target with shift click accordingly. But have target with shift click, what's going on? R2D2 is a droid. However, our force shock only targets characters and creatures. You can see here. You need a character or a creature targeted. So when we target the first uh, R2D2, the, the card complain, you are not having a valid target for this effect. Oops! Would you like to immediately cancel this effect? Cancelling this effect will abort this card and take it back into your hand. So let's say yes. What happens? The card goes back into your hand. No harm, no foul. I forgot R2D2 was a droid. So let's continue. I'm going to... Now that I have 5 resources, because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Let's try to bring Obi-Wan Kenobi in the game. So Obi-Wan Kenobi, double click R2D2, one resource, two resource, three resource, four resource, five resource. Obi-Wan Kenobi comes in. Now again, the Dark Star player has a react. This time I do have a valid character for me for this effect. So, four choke again, targeting Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now we have a valid target, we double click on our effect. What happened? Obi-Wan Kenobi got a damage token. What happened also? Darth Vader has a trigger. When you see, uh, again, the green highlight, one of our cards has an opportunity to take it effect. Darth Vader's uh, trigger allows us to target one of the units in the game. So in that case, we have, uh, have Obi-Wan Kenobi. Double-clicking on Darth Vader will give him another damage. Uh, Darth Vader, however, can target any unit even droids. So in this case we could easily get rid of R2D2. However, we're going to just damage Obi-Wan Kenobi, so we get him down and ready to die. As you can see, double clicking on a card that uh, has a green highlight, clears the highlight and uh, returns it to the previous one and does whatever effect is bound to happen. As you can see, Darth Vader got activated, his uh, this uh, Token means that Darth Vader's ability was used for this turn. So if I used another Sith event this turn, Darth Vader won't activate once more. And let's continue onwards. Our Obi-Wan Kenobi is damaged, quite in a sorry state already. 
we're going to go to the conflict phase but we're just going to stay we are and just continue to the force phase and add our Obi-Wan Kenobi to the force yellow white kite line control enter balance of the force is automatically calculated 6 versus 0 it's an obvious choice Dark Star player begins control enter I'll, the death star advised by 1 control enter we refresh all our cards so until now you've seen it's two simple very simple turns from the game you've seen uh, uh, how uh, the game triggers the various effects as you play your cards you've seen what triggering means either when you play a card as it was the case of an interrogation droid or as you playing a card as was the case in Darth Vader there's various other trigger effects when a card changes when a face changes for example or when characters leave play or get or do strikes etc etc um, we're going to see this all this soon as the uh, with some more concrete examples before we do that though let's talk a bit about how you destroy objectives and how the game ends now as is a uh, uh, as is normal uh, the game uh, for the dark side player will end once we reach uh, the death star dial on 12 um, as soon as the death star dial reaches 12 either by uh, destroying objectives or by um, uh, during the balance phase then the game will announce that the game has is over um, on the other side uh, the game will end for the light side player once three objectives from the uh, dark side player have been destroyed um, let's see how we destroy objectives now um, we have our shadow or our in you must go let's say that we managed to damage it a few more times and now this objective is ready to be destroyed to, to destroy an objective the player who controls the objective simply mouses over the objective and presses discard or thwart objective or simply the delete button the game will ask you if your opponent just managed to thwart your objective you press yes the objective goes away uh, and the death star dial advances by one because this was a light side object that got destroyed where this objective go is nowhere to earn us it is in fact on our opponent's side you can see this is the victory pile and our objective is in this is normally hidden since you usually just want to know the amount of objectives they have destroyed if the opponent destroys another objective let's say they destroyed a Jedi training yes and the death star dial advances by 2 the death star dial is now to 6 same wise the more objectives they destroy the more the Death Star dial will increase 3 and then 6 etc., and then uh, 3 and then 4 etc etc so once we have an objective destroyed how do we refresh these objectives it's quite easy in fact uh, let's finish the turn from the dark side and then you can see it in action so the, f the dark side finishes the turn the light side starts okay and let's go to the refresh phase as soon as you go to the refresh phase all your objectives will be refreshed you get two new objectives from your objective pile and they're automatically uh, put in the right location in the same way it's exactly what happens for the dark side player before we go into a bit more advanced stuff let's talk about some other basic actions you may want to do first of all let's say that you uh, did a mistake and you assign the unit to the force by, uh, by mistake how do you remove it? you right click the unit you go to manual card actions and you clear commitment to the force remember that you should only do this if you did it by mistake because you're not normally allowed to take a unit out of the force similar if you are in an engagement and you've sent a unit you double click on a unit by mistake and you didn't mean to you can clear participation and you can declare the unit out of the engagement 
Capturing is another effect that uh, happens quite often, especially now that Edge of Darkness is out. And um, it almost always happens because of some card effect, uh, which means that uh, the you don't really ever need to do it manually. So let's see how it works. Uh, we're going to bring in an objective that allows us to capture a card. So we refresh our cards and we get a cruel interrogation. The cruel interrogation uh, gets a, a green highlight, which means it triggers an ability after it comes into play. So let's use it right now. It will automatically target and uh, capture a random card from our opponent's hand. There we go. The card is face, put face down on the table and we can look at it uh, with because it has this little eye. This little eye means that the card is being picked at by the player who has that little eye. In this case it's us. Uh, the opponent cannot see what the card is. When you capture a card it always happens this way. It goes uh, to one objective and remains with that objective until it's destroyed, uh, whereas wherein all the cards are rescued. So let's say I still want to capture some cards uh, manually. How do I do this? I target a card, I go to manual target actions and I capture a target. Let's put it again on cruel interrogations. Same thing, it goes like there. I can also capture cards from the opponent's hand. I target a card on the hand. You can actually target a card from the opponent's hand if you want. And press the capture target, control C. We put it, cruel interrogations again. We can also target a card from the deck. We target the deck, we press Ctrl C, let's put it on Fall of the Jedi this time. As you can see, it gets a bit uh, crowded here, but you can easily see what is going on. How do we rescue cards? There's two ways. The easiest way is obviously for the light side player to thwart the objective that has the cards. Let's say that the objective uh, the opponent throws thwarts the cruel interrogations. Did your opponent thwart it? Yes. Objective is destroyed. All cards have returned to the Jedi's hand. Quite easy and simple. All you need to do is thwart the objective and the cards are yours. Let's say we want to explicitly rescue a card, let's say with a card effect or something went wrong, and we want to do it manually. We target a card, manual actions, rescue target, card returns to our hand. So that's the way card capturing and target and rescuing works. Most of the time you won't really need to use the manual effects as simply playing the cards that capture or rescue and targeting the appropriate cards will do the job for you. Another thing you may be called to do sometimes is to return a number of cards back to the bottom of your deck in a random order. Uh, when you do that, for example via a card effect like there is no escape, then this will happen automatically. You don't really need to do anything yourself. However, uh, when you uh, want to do it manually for any reason, then you can uh, do it in the following way. Uh, Octagon allows you to drag a selection window on the table. Every card with this green, with this yellow highlight will be using the effect that you're going to do. For example, if I target these cards and press uh, Alt F, which is to add a focus token, then both of these cards get a focus token. In this case, we want to send these cards to the bottom of the deck in random order. Since the game needs to know all the cards that are going to go in random order before we send them back, we target them all. If you want to exclude the card, you can just control and click on the card. Control clicking on a card adds it or removes it from the selection. So in this case, let's say we want to send these four units back. Now let's see this in action. We can look at our deck and we can look at the all cards in our deck. Your opponent will see that we're looking at it, but this will allow us to see. You can use this action when you're looking for a specific card in your deck. Let's select all the cards, exclude that and then send to the bottom of the deck in random order. And there we go. All the cards have returned to the bottom of our deck in random order. We close and shuffle and we're done. Another tricky thing you need to keep in mind is uh, during conflicts. Uh, when you have a unit which has many different types of combat icons, uh, the game 
need some help in figuring out where to put what tokens. Uh, in the case of a simple unit, like a secret informant, when you uh, strike with her, the, her folk, her icons will go automatically uh, where it's targeted. So you have one unit damage and one blast damage. The unit damage will go to the unit we have targeted, the blast damage will go to the objective. Very simple. However, in the case of Obi-Wan Kenobi, for example, who has one damage, one blast damage, two focus tokens and one blast damage, it things become a bit more muddy. Let's say I attack with Obi-Wan Kenobi and my opponent has a few more units. How does the game cannot recognize where our damage and our focus tokens are supposed to go? So I need some guidance. When you attack with such a unit, the game will put automatically any blast damage tokens on the table. However, it will tell you that attention, due to multiple effects, no doubles of focus tokens have been not assigned. Please I use Alt D and Alt F to assign markers to targeted units manually. So the game tells you that I know how much damage you did. You did one unit damage and two tactics, one blast damage, but I cannot figure out where you want those tokens to go. So in that case, simply target its unit you want one by one and put the appropriate tokens by pressing the tokens targeted option. It's the same exact shortcuts as before, but you need to press the shortcut on the table. So let's say I want to put two tactics on Darth Vader and one, ta and one double, uh, unit damage on the droid. I would target Vader, I would press Alt F and Alt F, then I would untarget Darth Vader, I would target the droid and I would press Alt D. And let's say instead you wanted to put one focus on Vader and uh, Coruscant Defense Fleet and then one damage on the human replica droid. If you target a doll and try to put a focus do a token, everybody would get a focus token. So what we do is first put the focus tokens and both of them get together. Every targeted card will get a token. And then we untarget these and we put the damage token. If you wanted instead to put uh, the focus token on both and then the damage token on Vader, you would untarget the defense fleet and you would put the damage on Vader. Simple as that. Keep in mind when you target a card, put in tokens using the shortcuts for the tokens, put the tokens on that cards. When you have the mouse over one of your cards and only one of your cards, then the tokens will go on your cards, regardless of who you have targeted. Uh, this is because if you write, if you see here, I cannot modify these cards. I cannot move them, I cannot remove tokens, I cannot use any actions. So mousing over these cards and pressing Alt D does nothing. So to, the only way to add or remove tokens from your opponent's cards is to target them and then use the shortcuts. If you get a habit of targeting cards and using the shortcuts, then it's always the same. Just remember that if you mouse one of your one over one of your cards, and even if you have something else targeted, then your card takes precedence. In a similar way, uh, with the targeting, uh, you can use an option to inspect cards. Inspect is an option that you have either in your right-click menu on a card, or by targeting a card on the table and right-clicking on the table. Inspect simply gives you the information from the card in a window. Use this if you have sensor cards and you do not know the text or if you find it difficult to read particular text of a card. Okay, now let's go to a few more advanced interactions. Um, we talked about before about having a events, but there's also interrupts which cancel those effects. Um, let's see this a bit in action. Um, let's say we want to play four stasis and uh, target Obi-Wan Kenobi. We play the card, we pay for it, and now we have a chance to activate the effect. However, my opponent has a C-3PO in, in their hand. At this moment, we can activate C-3PO to cancel the effect of Forstasis. To use an ability which, is, uh, which exists on a card but doesn't have a definite, uh, but doesn't trigger by itself, as you see, didn't trigger by a green highlight when the card hit the table. We use, we simply need to double click the card to declare that we're going to use it. So, we double click on C3PO and we notify that we're about to take effect. 
we target the card about to take effect with C3PO, we double click him again, and the card gets a effect cancelled marker. Now, when my opponent tries to use their four stasis, even if they haven't targeted a, a proper target, since it's a forced effect cancel card, it will automatically be discarded. So let's try that now, see what happens. Darth Vader triggered. Why? Because even though four stasis effects were cancelled, playing the Sith effect of four stasis was not. So Darth Vader can still trigger to do a damage. Simply target, select the card we want, done. So triggers uh, can also be cancelled with various card effects. Um, let's see a bit more, a, a few other triggers. Uh, Fall of the Jedi allows us to draw a card uh, when, uh, when on, during our draw phase. It allows us to draw a card from my hand to the bottom of the deck. So let's go to the draw phase and see how that works. The Fall of the Jedi is now triggered. If I try to use it, it's going to complain. I don't have a valid card. So let's try to select a card. He wants to select us a card from our hand. So let's select our target of opportunity. And our target of opportunity went to the bottom of our decks. And Fall of the Jedi stopped triggering. Um, another trigger, for example, if we destroy the Fall of the Jedi, Palpatine egg triggered. Why? Because an objective left play. So, we cannot trigger Palpatine. Let's see what happens. It gives us a list of all the cards, of all the events in our discard pile that we can pick, and we can choose one of them to put in our hand. Let's bring back our first shock. Again, uh, as you play the game, various uh, cards will trigger under various effects. Uh, when you see a card triggering, uh, this is an opportunity for the owner of the card to use its effects. Um, the only tricky part about it is that uh, card effects have a window of opportunity. If you do not use your card effect within the phase that they have triggered, then you lose the reaction of, uh, window. So let's say that Darth Vader hadn't used his ability. We play a force choke. We choke that girl. And now Darth Vader is about to trigger. However, we don't, we forget about it or we miss our opportunity or whatever, and we go to the next phase. Darth Vader loses his effect. Most of the time you're not going to forget this effect because um, the cards are pretty obviously waiting for you to trigger. But if your opponent plays a bit too fast, sometimes there's a chance this might happen. And then when you double click your unit, it does nothing anymore. In those cases, you can ask them to play slower and just do, for now do the effect manually. In this case, just press Alt-D and do the damage manually. Another window where many uh, card effects can happen is during strikes. Let's say that we are in combat and we have sent our data style advanced and we're about to strike. We've moved through all the phases and we're down on resolving strikes. So Darth Vader, the Darth Vader style advanced has an ability that when you focus to strike you can pick a unit from your deck. You can draw a card randomly and see what it is. So let's try and see what happens. We double click on it and we get the classic trigger window. We have the focus for striking and now uh, Vader Star Advance can use this ability. If we double click again, Vader Star Advance is going to use the ability and see draw a card or random from the top of our deck. If we decide that we don't want to use the ability, we use ignore card trigger. If we do you want to use the ability, we just double click on it. Yes. And hit strikes with an extra tactic from the advisor to the emperor. Um, if you have cards in the game that have built-in abilities uh, that don't have a reaction window and they are simple actions, then simply double-clicking on them will notify the other player that you are about to use them, at which point they can use reacts or interrupts to stop you. So let's say I want to use my Black Squadron Assault. I double-click the Black Squadron. I target my Vader Star Advance. Double-click on it. Vader Star Advance is ready to strike again. I strike again. Use its reaction. What do you see? You get one more Blast Damage, one more Unit Damage. Finish the objective. Unopposed Damage. 
hit and run, it's ready to die. One last thing of reacts that we see is forced reacts, like a rancor. A forced rank is special in that you cannot skip its uh, effect. Normally, if uh, a card is about to trigger and uh, we ignore it, its reaction will go away. Let's see what happens with a rancor. Go to the next phase. Uh -uh. Warning, the rancor force trigger is still remaining. The trigger of a force effect will not go away, even if you pass a turn. This is to prevent mistakes by somebody playing too fast, uh, or just missing an effect, or conveniently forgetting it. The rancor will have to be used, so to use it, simply, so to use it, just double click on the rancor. Uh, one thing to remember, sometimes you have cards that are just not scripted. Some of them have very tricky abilities, or uh, abilities that are just easier to do manually. One example is, for example, interrogation. If I play interrogation, I pay for it, nothing happens. Uh, at this point, you simply uh, need to do its effect manually. How would a card like interrogation work? The opponent will simply right-click on their hand and put visibility for us. I would look at my opponent's hand, I would say, okay, uh, discard the R2D2, my opponent would mouse over R2D2, press delete, and then remove the visibility. And that's all. It uh, may be the case that cards like uh, interrogation get uh, fixed in the future or get automated, but if you see a card that is not triggering by itself or is not working as expected, simply do its effects manually. And afterwards, discard it. Finally, um, let's see how we restart the game. To restart the game, to play a new one, you simply go to game. One of the players has to go into game and press reset. The game will warn you that you are about to end the game. You will press yes and everything will be wiped. Then again, simply load the new deck. Let's play this time Imperial Navy. And let's play Rebel Alliance. And once again, the same procedure. Control Shift S, Control Shift S, choose your objectives, put them on the table, choose your objectives, put them on the table, take any mulligans that you want, okay, and then reveal your objectives on one side, reveal the objectives on the other side. In this case, what do you know? We have taken prisoner, it triggers automatically. We use it. These are the cards as cards as we see. Let's capture one Mothma. And there we go. One thing to keep in mind is, uh, and it's very important, is with you playing with automations, is you should never drag and drop cards around. Drag and dropping cards, while it may seemingly work, um, it tends to break a lot of scripts, especially if the cards have hit the table. On the uh, on your hand, you can get around, you can work around with dragging cards in your discard pile. But it's just easier than it's just easy to must just mouse over the card and press the delete button. If you drag them around, uh, you have a chance to do mistakes. For example, put them on the bottom of your deck instead of uh, on your discard pile, or if instead of the top, or just uh, put them on the bottom of your discard pile instead of the normal. Um, and if they're on the table, there's a lot of cards, a lot of scripts that happen when they come into play and when they get and when they leave play. Th let's take an example. Let's say we have Leia Organa. Uh, this warning notifies you that you cannot play a card outside of the deployment phase. So let's. For now, we don't care. We're just going to bypass it. And you can also bypass the payment of a card by double clicking on it and playing it like this when it's waiting for money. Um, so we have Leia Organa and we have a bunch of focus tokens everywhere. Now, if I just drag and drop Organa into my discard pile, nothing happens. I have to manually remove all my tokens. However, if I mouse over Organa and choose to discard her, you will see she triggers her ability. Let's use it and see what happens. 
the game will ask me what do you want to uh, capture it. In this case, we just have to communicate with our opponent and ask them where they want to capture Organa before we trigger her ability. And once we know where we're going to capture her, we put here, we select that objective, and all our objectives remove their focus tokens. Um, sometimes this may fail a bit because Organa does so many things together, so just clear the tokens manually. So keep in mind, especially for objectives and units on the table, never manually discard a card like this. Always mouse over the card and press the delete button or just discard card to the uh, fourth objective. This is the proper way to use the plugin, otherwise a lot of things may break and th there's nothing I can do about it because you're going outside of what I have control over. Um, apropos automations though, however, uh, if you one of those players who would like to play the game um, but doesn't uh, want the game to remind him of all their actions because let's say they want to train for tournaments or they want to um, uh, be uh, able to uh, remember everything and train themselves to remember all their abilities there is one option you can switch on which is called hardcore mode hardcore mode simply hides all the reaction triggers, the green highlight, unless you are ready to trigger them yourself, unless you remember to trigger them yourself. What this means is that cards like um, Mission Briefing and Mobilizer Squadrons will not work by themselves. Let's say we are like this, we have like fo focus tokens here for some reason, or opponent's turn begins. F1, Mission Briefing triggers. We now double click on it, we draw a card. Our opponent continues, his card triggers, he doesn't want to use it, continues, 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 and our turn starts. We do our damage, we continue, our mobilized squad triggers, we use it, it removes an extra token, and we continue on. So, you see that with the, uh, with the, uh, with the normal abilities, you get some notifications when various cards are about to trigger. Let's see how it works with hardcore mode on. Again, we've reached the end of our turn. Our opponent goes. They start, nothing happens. However, if as a light side player, now double click on the mission briefing, what's this? The card was waiting to be triggered, but didn't show it. Uh, as soon as I double click on the mission briefing, the card highlighted to inform our opponent that I'm about to use the mission briefing and now I can double click it again to use it. So what hardcore mode does is that it hides the ability trigger but if you remember to use it you can just simply double click the card at the appropriate moment and the ability trigger will light up. So let's see a bit what happens if I forget. The dark side starts a turn, now if I double click the card it would work. I don't my opponent says, do you have any reacts? I say, no, I don't have any reacts. My opponent continues. His ability triggers, and I say, oh, hold on a moment, I forgot the briefing of briefing. I double click on it, nothing happens. Why? I lost the opportunity to use the mission briefing. It's now uh, the next phase, and the reacts only happen for one turn. Similarly, my opponent continues the turn. My turn starts, I do some damage, I go on. My mobilized squadron removes it, and I remember, oh, I can use the mobilized squadrons now to remove a token. I double click on it, it triggers, I use it. If I again, I didn't use it, if I was in the refresh phase, and I moved on, and then, oh, I forgot it, double click on it, does nothing anymore. And that's all Hardcore does. Uh, it basically turns off all the notification, the announcements of cards uh, and triggers, but uh, effects and... Uh, and um, normal uh, and other actions that don't require a trigger uh, still continue working normally. For example, if I play my X-Wing, I'm just going to bypass its cost, and then I assigned a Astromech upgrade, and let's say now I'm going to conflict phase and I'm going to attack, I assign my thing, I attack, now, even though I'm in hardcore mode, the X-Wing still did the extra damage from the Astromech Droid upgrade. Why? Because the Astromech Droid upgrade is not a react, is not an interrupt. It doesn't 
require us to remember to use its ability anymore that X-Wing requires us to remember to use its combat icons. And the same is true for abilities uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, cards that reduce the, the cost of the first card you play in your turn, or cards that increase your reserve when they come into play. Anything that is not a react or interrupt continues working automatically. Only reacts and interrupts that are not forced are affected by hardcore mode. For people who are even are not uh, happy with uh, hardcore mode, uh, there is another option they can use, which is to turn specific automations on or off. The automation we can turn on or off is the play automations. The play automations is what happens when you play an event or unit from your hand. For example, normally when you play a super laser engineer, it has an ability that finds a react uh, uh, card from your deck and puts it in your hand. However, if I disable the play automations, I play the Super Laser Engineer, nothing happens. No uh, effect triggers from the Super Laser Engineer. And the same is true for the various events. Say I have a Detained, so I play Detained, I pay for it, nothing happens. If I turn on Play Automations though, I play it, I use it, it triggers, I capture a card. Much faster. Um, automatic triggers. Automatic triggers is very similar to hardcore mode, only it completely disables the effects, which means that uh, you have to do them manually. Your cards will never trigger, and it's not that they will just hide the triggers, it won't trigger at all. So if you use the automatic triggers on or off, then you will always have to remember to draw a card manually by double-clicking your deck or uh, remove a focus token by uh, targeting, mousing over a card, pre pressing Alt Shift F, etc. Et um, finally, start a phase turn automations. This completely disables uh, what happens at the start of your turn. For example, if I have the balance of the force, now if I start my turn, nothing happens. F2 doesn't refresh any of my cards. So if I press F2, nothing happens. F3 won't refill our hand. F6 won't calculate the force. So if you disable the end of turn or phase automations, you basically disable the built-in uh, stuff that happens during every phase. So if you like to remember to uh, unfocus all your cards and if you want to manually increase the dial every turn, then you have to disable this. Finally, we have the automatic placement. Automatic placement, you've probably noticed already that you can play various units and they will automatically be placed at a somewhat nice location. Now, what happens if, we're automation, if the placement automations are down? We play a unit and it's automatically placed in its proper location. Yeah, we have some effects. Let's say that we now wanted to move our units, we like to play with our units like this. And we had some units on the table in these locations. And let's say we lost two of those units. If I play a new unit, it's automatically placed on the location that just opened. So automatic locations basically, first of all, place the units in an easy to see location, in a, in, a, in a location that makes sense according to the designer. And afterwards, as, as units are leaving play, then new units automatically replace them in their positions. So once you've set up the position that you want your units to sit in, then automatic placement allows you to keep placing in the same location. If you disable automatic placements, then new units will always go and stay where they are. So you always have to move them manually where you want. And finally, if you want to play with completely all automations or on or off, you can go go automations and tell them all on or off. Basically, telling uh, all automations on or off is switching the... Uh, flipping all the automations as uh, you have them. 
So now that everything is on, turning all automations off, and there you see. Um, this is not recommended because in the developer's experience, it makes the game extremely tedious. It's, the option is still provided for those people who are dominantly uh, against using any sort of automation. But uh, as a new player, it will be much more beneficial to take a little bit of time to get used to how the game works. And that is all. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial video. I hope the game will now be uh, easier to handle and understand and see how all the uh, things fit together. Uh, don't be afraid to report any bugs or issues you find. I make a best effort be uh, to fix everything as soon as it's uh, reported. And if you have any suggestion for improvements or any bugs that you find, uh, there is an issue tracker on GitHub. So at the end of each game, you will get a link to this page so you can copy paste it and then you can quickly uh, report a new issue that you find or see if the issue exists and say that this happens to me. Uh, all you need to do is create a free account on GitHub and then you'll be able to report any issues that you find. This is really helpful for me as it allows me to track what I'm working on and what I've fixed and let you know as well when the issue you reported has been resolved. Keep visiting the uh, uh, blog of the, the official blog for the game, uh, for the game definition, obviously, uh, for new updates, so you can see what is going on, what updates are coming out, and then uh, this is obviously the place where you go to grab the X-Force packs, or possibly contact the developer if you want to tell me anything about the game. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you online for some games.